Welcome to the protagonist pub. My name is Tammy, and this is where characters gather. So it's Monday the eighth, and um, Barrel would be the hurricane that wasn't. Uh, yeah, it came ashore as as, as a cat. One, I believe, maybe a cat too, and it barreled on through. It came ashore in near Houston and has moved on out. We got nothing no winds, no rain, no nothing. nothing. Um, all this California native has to say is give me an earthquake any day of the week. They come, they go. They do their thing and yet carry on with life. There is none of this intense build up, will it, won't it, prepare, you know. The the nonsense went on for days and nobody could tell you anything. You know, one moment it's going west and we're, you know, getting the eastern end of it and we're getting, you know, 12 to 15 inches of rain. And then by the time we went to bed last night, it was coming ashore and we were within the potential flooding and power outage range on the western side, but just barely. And then it came ashore and nothing happened. Uh, Give me an earthquake. There's no buildup. It just comes, it goes, you deal with it and you move on. It's amazing how what you grew up with as a kid is easier to deal with. So, This is going to be a little bit different. I have a bunch of clips to insert that I filmed before I took the books back to the library. So those will be coming up. Longer discussions will be in the appropriate blog blog for those clips. And I have a giant stack of DNFs this week. They range from the content was objectionable to I was bored to what even was that? Some of them are soft enough and if it's a soft enough, I'll mention it because I just could have not been in the mood for it. And some of them are are definite hard DNFs. So let's do the hard DNFs first. Um, First up would be Wanderlust by L. Everhart, library book. All of these are library books with, I think, one exception. New to me author. Sounded interesting. It fits for the summer reading challenge. It was an adventure. And it reads a little young. And then I got, let's see where it is. Not too far into the book. I was flipping through it maybe. And I saw her. She had her LinkedIn profile in here. And um, she had her pronouns listed in her LinkedIn profile. Which, you know, pretty much told me everything I needed to know. And I couldn't be bothered. So, I'm just going to go back to the library. It is a contemporary romance. It is published by Penguin. I don't need to, you know, continue down that path. The next one I definitely talk about in my summer reading vlog, so I'm just going to mention it briefly here. That is Lori Foster is the author. The series is Cooper's Charm. And the first book is Cooper's Charm, and the second book is Sisters of Summer Edge. And not for me. Just this is this is the first book. And if you know me, you you think, okay, it's got a dog on the cover. It's a cute cover. There's a good chance I'm gonna like it. We all know I love dogs. This starts off, and you know from the very beginning of the book that something bad has happened to our female protagonist, and it involves men you don't know what it is and the male protagonist very early on um 
I believe it's chapter two, maybe three. Um, he starts talking about to himself. It's an internal monologue. Um, the way she looks and how he's attracted to her. I was done. Yeah. You, you, you've set up the fact that she has a problem with men and then it immediately goes to that. Don't need to go down that road. Um, next up are two Susan Mallory books. One I've already returned and there's probably a clip. If so, I'll insert it here. Okay, quick update because I'm returning the books to the library tomorrow. And I thought I would do an insert clip here before I do that, since I have the physical books. I have three DNFs. I talk about them in depth in an upcoming vlog, so I'm just going to go through them very quickly for the weekly update. Um, first, and amazing enough, they were all new books at my library. First DNF was The Library of Borrowed Hearts by Lucy Gilman. Love the cover. I love the title. I DNF the book by page three. Yeah. So you know there was a problem with that book. Next up is How to Solve Your Own Murder by Christian Perrin. This is a dual timeline mystery. I didn't like the writing style. There wasn't anything really wrong with it. I wasn't connecting with the characters. I didn't enjoy the writing. I thought some of the phraseology and word choices were a little weird and it just wasn't working for me. And I have enough books to read both on my physical shelves and from the library and waiting for me at the library. So I didn't need to force myself to read that. And the last, as of this clip, <laughs> TNF of the week is the summer book club by Susan Mallory. This is a 2024 release as well. And I read, um, I think close to 70 pages in this. It was fine. Um, this should have been one I liked. However, the trash talking about toxic masculinity and, that whole bent and, you know, uh, wasn't enjoying, you know, maybe there is a redemption arc for that whole beginning trait by the end of the book. I didn't care enough to find out, which is unfortunate, but you know, it happens and that's okay. So that is the quick update. Now back to the rest of the world. The update. If not, I will mention that the first book is The Summer Book Club, and the second book by Susan Mallory is The Summer of Sunshine and Margot, which I mentioned last week I really wanted to read. Um, I'm going to assume I have a clip. I remember filming the clip. So, The Summer of Sunshine and Margot, there was nothing truly wrong. I was bored. To be honest, I was just bored. And if you're going to give me a beach read book, I don't want to be bored. I was bored. So that one, what else did I DNF? I have a feeling. Yep. I have a couple of clips to insert right here. Those are inserted. Okay. Next up. This Okay, quick update because I'm returning the books to the library tomorrow and I thought I would do an insert clip here before I do that since I have the physical books. I have three DNFs. I talk about them in depth in an upcoming vlog, so I'm just going to go through them very quickly for the weekly update. Um, first... And amazing enough, they were all new books at my library. First DNF was The Library of Borrowed Hearts by Lucy Gilman. Love the cover. I love the title. I DNF the book by page three. Yeah. So you know there was a problem with that book. 
Next up is How to Solve Your Own Murder by Christian Perrin. This is a dual timeline mystery. I didn't like the writing style. There wasn't anything really wrong with it. I wasn't connected with the characters. I didn't enjoy the writing. I thought some of the phraseology and word choices were a little weird. And it just wasn't working for me. And I have enough books to read both on my physical shelves and from the library and waiting for me at the library. So I didn't need to force myself to read that. And the last, as of this clip, <laughs> TNF of the week, is The Summer Book Club by Susan Mallory. This is a 2024 release as well. And I read, um, I think, close to 70 pages in this. It was fine. Um, this should have been one I liked. However, the trash talking about toxic masculinity and that whole bent and you know wasn't enjoying you know maybe there is a redemption arc for that whole beginning trait by the end of the book I didn't care enough to find out which is unfortunate but you know it happens and that's okay. So that is the quick update. Now back to the rest of the, the update. This is a softy enough. This was again, I was bored. That's Miss Latimer's letter by Suzanne Elaine. I, there was nothing wrong with it. I was just bored. It was predictable and I was bored and it wasn't working, which is fine. That happens. Um, next up, I thought this one was going to work for me for sure. Somewhere by the Sea by Susan Wiggs. Again, I was bored. Second Chance Romance. It, I got like 50, 75 pages in. I was just bored. I didn't want to read anymore. I found it trite. I found it predictable. I just, I, don't bore me. If you want me to read your book, don't bore me. And this was absolutely, I was just bored. So the last one is a definite soft DNF. And that is A Holly Jilly Christmas by Emma St. Clair. Um, uh, anxiety ridden this was a novella for the love and chic texas series it's just an anxiety ridden female protagonist and a very standoffish male protagonist and wasn't feeling it just wasn't feeling it so it's softy enough for now. There are two other softy enough on my Kindle this this weekend. Is first one is a Martha Keys host for the holiday holiday host. It's right here. It's set in Paris. Um, there were so many red flags in the beginning. I was just like, whoa, no. I have a feeling with these, those, the last two books I talked about, the Emma and the Martha, and the one I'm going to talk about next, are all, I wasn't in the mood to read them, so they're going to be soft DNFs. I will try picking them up again at Christmas. They are all Christmas books. The last soft DNF on this list is um, The Xmas by Courtney Walsh. And... This was a little bit better, but not much. Wasn't working for me from the very get-go. Um, but at least it wasn't as off-putting as the Emma book. And I think at this point I was just, something really had to grab me to 
capture my attention. And so it's going in the soft DNF pile for now. All three of them. I'll try again at Christmas. And we shall see. So there is one other soft DNF, and this is definitely a soft DNF, and I will check it right back out of the library when I'm done. That is The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this book. I am fully invested, but it has been a very long time, and I mean a very long time. I would not be shocked to tell you it's probably been four decades since I have read Pride and Prejudice. And to fully enjoy this book, I need to reread Pride and Prejudice, so I'm going to do that. And then I will check this one back out. Life will be good. So it is a definite soft DNF. So like I said, there were a lot of DNFs this week. There were a lot of good reads, but there were a lot of DNFs. What happens when you lose footage? You have to re-record it. Yeah. I know I have recorded this before. Can I find that footage? No. Is it in any of my backup sites? No. So, I guess we're doing it again. So, I know. Okay, so, what did I read? You're about to see the clip from Summer at the Saint by Mary Kay Andrews. I personally loved this book. I know Amanda picked it up on my recommendation and she DNF'd it yesterday, which is fine. All books hit readers differently and there is a difference. She listened to it. I physically read it. And I honestly think my brain has trained itself over the years to skip language in books and if I noticed it it was situationally appropriate for what was going on in the book so it is going to be different for everybody I found nothing objectionable in the book I and we all know I don't give you trigger warnings so I will still recommend Summer at the Saint all day long. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved the mystery. I loved the characters. I loved everything about it. So here's the clip. <laughs> long have the book. It has been returned to the library. That is Summer at the Saint by Mary Kay Andrews. This is her summer 2024 release. I absolutely loved it. It is a mystery. There is a thread of romance, but it is by far a sub subplot. There is intrigue. There's family drama. This was just a, a quintessential Mary Kay Andrews beach read. I loved everything about it. I loved the characters. I loved the intricacy of the story. I love how all the story threads were interwoven with one another. I adored the characters in this book. So our protagonist is, her name keeps flying out of my head. She is a 40, 40 something year old widow and she inherited from her husband the family's posh upscale hotel on an island off of Georgia. Her brother-in-law inherited the family real estate holding portion of the family estate. And She is kind of floundering. The events of 2020 impacted the hotel and she's trying to recover from that. And this is her make or break it summer. And there's staff shortages. So she ends up having to build an on-site dormitory to house some staff as an enticement to work at the hotel. She 
convinces her beloved niece to take up the job that was just vacated for customer relations, much to the chagrin of her brother-in-law, who is outraged, and thus sets the scene. And this very quickly turns into, there are shenanigans going on within hotel management. And her niece is actively trying to figure out what exactly is going on. The new hotel staff arrive. They have some baggage of their own. But, you know, they're all good fits. And they're all living in the dorm together. And then Parrish, who is the niece, um, is found dead in the woods after a beach party for employees. And things just take off from there. We have, you know, the hotel shenanigans that are going on. Why was Parrish murdered? What happened at the Saint um, 20 odd years ago? And how is that impacted today? Is it going to stay open? There's just all kinds of tea and drama that you come to expect in American Andrews book. And there are no open door scenes. So I consider this clean. It is a secular book. I absolutely adored the story. No surprise. We all know I love Mary Andrews writing. I love her characters. I love how she interweaves plots and subplots together. I love her complex characters that are completely relatable. I love that she manages to insert real world concerns into a fictional story without politicizing any of it. There is no hint of politics in this book. There is no hint of reality, even though there are real world situations here. It was, it was just pure joy. And I will do a deeper dive in the summer vlog for this book. Um, which will be coming out sooner rather than later because I am having trouble keep track of all the vlog moving pieces that are going on on my computer as this afternoon's editing session has proven. But I loved it. Is it going to be for everybody? No. Do I still recommend this book? Absolutely I do. I love a good interconnected, interwoven story and this was that and when i need a beach read that's what i need i need i need the tea to be spilled i need some drama you know a hint of romance is great or a lot of romance with drama mystery that roll throw it all together in a blender and come up with a great book i'm perfectly happy i was perfectly happy with this book and yeah i have absolutely no trouble recommending this book. And not everybody agrees with me and that's okay because not every reader is the same and I am okay with that. So, okay, we are going to go back to the regular blog or weekly update now and I will do a much deeper dive on this when I am not trying to get a film clip in before Dave has the next meeting. So, I loved this book. Okay, I'm inserting another clip for my weekly wrap up because by the time I film next Monday, this will have been returned to the library. And I wanted to talk about it before I returned it. That is The Book Club Hotel by Sarah Morgan. This is a new book on my library shelves. It was released in 2023. I am not going to talk about this one in too much depth because I talk about it in the Christmas in July vlog. I will tell you that this is a 368 page delight for book lovers, lovers of best friend stories, found family quite literally. There is 
it's set in December. It's not overtly Christmas. It's secular. There is a thread of romance. There is understanding that it's never too late in life to change. There is the thread that marriage should never be taken for granted and you need to work at it constantly, even if it doesn't feel like there's a reason to, because this is a great reminder that sometimes while everything is great and it's easy to assume that it's always going to be that way, you need to take the time to check in with your, your husband and remind him how important he is to you and be thankful and how easy it is to always let life intervene. And sometimes we forget that taking one another for granted isn't always the best thing. So I loved this book. Stay tuned for the vlog where I talk about it in greater detail. But if you want a Christmas read that isn't overtly Christmas related, it isn't romance, it isn't religious, it isn't trying to be too much and be something for everybody, then yes, go pick up the Christmas book club or the book club hotel. Get at your library. I don't, like I say in the blog, I don't think this is one that anybody's going to go reread, but it is completely and totally worth the read. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And sometimes those impulse pickups from the, from the library end up being the greatest reads ever. So I am pleased. Okay, I wanted to get this clip filmed before I went to the library again and I turned in this book so that somebody else could have the absolute pleasure of reading it. And that is The Summer We Started Over by Nancy Thayer. This is a new release. It is a 2024 book. And I absolutely loved this book. It is a clean romance. It's definitely a beach read. It's full of family drama and secrets and a second chance romance and f finding your dreams and living your dreams. And I absolutely loved it. And if you notice, I tabbed a library book. And I'm going to read you the tab passage because it is, it is beautiful. And one of the, she's not a main character, but she's more than just a side character. So she's like in that no man's zone between those two categorizations. And she is a highly successful romance author and our, <clears throat> female protagonist worked for her or works for her and Dinah, who is the romance author has come to spend the summer with Eddie, her assistant and Eddie's family. And so this is Dinah talking. Dinah spoke gently because romance stirs up our endorphins. And we always need little hits from chemicals that are released when we fall in love. When we fall in love, we float on our pleasure into marriage, where we love profoundly, if we are lucky. But in marriage, reality comes stomping in like a smelly old warthog, crushing us with rent, mortgage, accidents, toothaches, difficult relatives, babies who won't sleep through the night. We lose our sense of romance beneath the problems of everyday life. Reading a romance novel wakes up our endorphins, relaxes and releases us from the grip of necessity to the pleasure of being with another person. It makes you remember how it felt when you were in love 
and your lover was sitting next to you and he simply touched your hand. Just one light touch and you're happy. She smiled and nodded to herself as if remembering. I thought that was just so beautifully profound. And it's true. Romance tends to be crushed under the weight of everyday life. And yet, when you read a romance book and it touches you, you remember why you fell in love all over again. And it brings back that release of endorphins. And this entire book is just gorgeous. I, I fell in love with her writing. I fell in love with the characters. I love that it was a standalone. I love that it, you know, you know me. I love a big, thick book. I love that this one wasn't a big, thick book. It wasn't short. It wasn't thick. It was just the perfect length. I love the characters. All of it was just, it was perfection. And I am going to read more Nancy Thayer. I, I am. I'm going to, when I go to the library this week, I have a couple books on hold waiting for me. I'm going to pick up another one or two. Because why would I not? I, I truly loved this book. Go to your library, pick it up, get it on Kindle, splurge and, and get yourself a nice, you know, bee tree that isn't going to take you a long time to read. And, you know, it has a second chance romance in it. And it isn't cringy second chance romance, by the way. There are no flashbacks to, you know, what we could have been. It's just... Two adults who weren't right for each other at one point in their life are now right for each other and they're smart enough to realize they never actually fell out of love with one another. It, this was just a magical read. Enough so that I wanted to read you that passage and put it in an edited clip because it, it was that good. The read was just that good. So, go pick yourself up a Nancy Thayer. You will not be disappointed. So, what am I reading? I did last night start The Ice Swan, which is the book club choice for this month. I am thoroughly invested in this. It broke my reading slump. It got me out of the, hey, let's DNF that, DNF this, and nothing's working. So, I'm on chapter, I want to say I'm on chapter 7. And I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It is well paced. It is got great banter. It is you if you read Russian literature and or studied Russian history, you can see that in this book without it being Russian literature. If you know, you know. Um so I am thoroughly enjoying this. I am, I am thoroughly enjoying this. And if it continues like this, I will want to read more from her. So we shall see. I also started this morning, Jane and the Unpleasantness at Scargrave Manor. This is the first book of the Jane Austen mystery series by Stephanie Barron. And I'm invested. I'm on chapter one. And yeah, I'm going to read this and love it. And it's good for Jane Austen July. So after I finish those, what am I going to read? I honestly don't know. It has been a very hit or miss reading week in the last week, which isn't normal for me. So it's kind of up in the air. Guess we will all know as the week progresses and I'll be back here next Monday to talk about it. So that was my reading week. Did you have a better reading week than I did? Leave a comment down below and let me know if you were impacted by what is now undoubtedly a tropical depression barrel. I hope everyone is safe and happy and healthy. I hope everybody had a great 4th of July and I will see you here next time at the protagonist's power.